Welcome back to the Interlake Sports Now. I'm Josh Dugan, and thank you, as always, for taking the time to check out the show. On this week's Sports Now, we'll start this thing out with a sports, with spring sports update, including some cat-dog baseball and some crosstown tennis. Got to get to those rivalries here in the Valley and some local softball action. Then we'll roll into the college sports news, starting with some former Valley athletes who are making headlines at the next level as members of the Grizz and Cats track and field teams. So that's always a good time. Then. We'll take a look at the Grizz football spring game that took place Friday night in Missoula and wrap this thing up with two more college football headlines. One is Grizz specific and the other relates to both the Grizz, the Cats, and the whole entire FCS football subdivision as a whole, including the Big Sky, all that fun stuff. Quick reminder, today's episode is brought to you by Nomad, voted the Flathead's best manufacturer. Nomad is a longtime supporter of our local community and sports scene, celebrating 20 years of building great careers and mission-focused custom vehicles. Nomad, a Montana-based company making a global impact. Visit nomadgcs.com for more info. That's nomadgcs.com for more information. All right. Thank you, as always, to Nomad GCS for the support. It's always much appreciated. All right. Let's serve you up some prep tennis action to start this thing out. Since Crosstown Tennis went down last Thursday at the Flathead Valley Community College, the Glacier Wolfpack boys and girls did pull off the Crosstown sweep over Flathead. Will Rudbach and Sam Eaglenot led the way with a double sweep for the Glacier boys. And Leilani Lenners picked up a big win for the girls to help lead the way for the Wolfpack girls. Gavin Rodriguez picked up the lone victory of the day for the Flathead boys. And Sarah Lauren grabbed the Bravettes' lone victory on the day. Always fun to cover a little crosstown rivalry, whether it's tennis, softball, whatever sports. There's always a little extra intensity there with the crosstown action. So shout out all our crosstown competitors who left it all out there on the court. All right, moving along to some more rivalry action that took place in the Flathead Valley last week. Cat Dog Baseball, always fun. Columbia Falls and Whitefish went at it Thursday at Sapa John Ru- John's Rude Field, excuse me, Sapa John Rude's Field in Sea Falls with the Bulldogs coming out on top to grab Cat Dog bragging rights for the time being with a 7-5 to five win. Michael Miller had a standout performance for the Bulldogs with two home runs at the plate and a strong day on the mound. Miller allowed three runs across five innings to add a win to a stat sheet, and Logan Stewart closed things out for the save for the Bulldogs. CJ Threw had a two-RBI double for the Bulldogs, while Tate Orm and Ryan Conklin each had two hits apiece. Cody Schweiker was the Wildcats' standout performer in the loss. He had three hits and an RBI. On to the local softball scene where both Flathead and Glacier made the trip to Helena Saturday and both Cal's ball schools picked up a split on the road with versus the Helena teams. The Bravettes beat Helena high five to three and fell to capital 10 to nothing while the Wolfpack beat Helena 10 to zero and fell to capital nine to six. Emma Cook had a homer in each game for the Wolfpack. Ella Farrell and Zoe Allen both homered in the Pack's win over Helena high. Speaking of the Wolfpack softball team, Let's take a moment to shout out our Hagado Media Montana poster player of the week from last Sunday's Daily Interlake. Glacier Wolfpack softball slugger Kennedy Godet, who smacked a solo home run in the Wolfpack's win over Columbia Falls in the battle of reigning state champions that we recapped on last week's Sports Now. Godet also had a sack fly to drive in another run in that game. And Godet was a key contributor on last year's state championship Wolfpack squad and should play a big role in the Wolfpack's quest to go back to back this year and win another state title. All right, that'll do it for our Hagadol Montana poster player of the week. Best of luck to Godet and the Wolfpack softball team this season as softball season hits its stride and the pack are chasing another state title looking to go back to back. That's always tough to do in any sport, but they have a strong core group of key returners from last year's state title team. So, hey, there's definitely a chance. In college track and field news, two former Valley athletes made headlines last week. We'll start out with former Flathead High track star Ben Perrin, who has had a strong career for the Montana State Bobcats. Perrin made the headlines for finishing fourth in the men's 5,000 meters event in Long Beach, California. Perrin finished just two one hundredth of a second behind the all-time Montana State record in the event set by Perrin's former teammate, Duncan Hamilton, who was a record setter of his own in quite a few things and went on, and is still competing, I believe, after college professional. I could be wrong, but last time I checked, he was. That being said, Perrin's performance was good for the ninth fastest time in the country so far this year. So shout out the former Flathead Brave and current Montana State Bobcat, Ben Perrin. Every time we have a Perrin highlight, it feels like he's shattering records or coming very close to it. So heck of an athlete in the track and field realm. All right, moving along and sticking with the track and field action. 
another former Valley product, this time a Glacier High product, and current Grizz athlete Evan Todd set a new PR in the javelin throw at the throw that traveled 70.78 meters and fell just inches shy of setting a new Montana school record. The throw was a top 25 mark in the nation this year and landed in the top 11 in the West region and met the minimum standards for Olympic qualifying. So overall, a big-time accomplishment by the former Glacier Wolfpack athlete who continues to reach new heights at the college level and was named the Big Sky Field Athlete of the Week for the third time in his career this Monday. So shout out to Todd and Perrin both for their accomplishments on the track and field scene. One of those sports that just pushes your athleticism and all those kind of things. So kudos to those guys. Let's move along to some Grizz football action. It is spring, but got the Grizz football spring game. So, you know, we had to dive into that just a little. I always say Grizz football, the gift that keeps on giving always something Grizz football related in the headlines. It feels like I'm going to go through four things that stood out to me, including some strong spring game showings from some area products, including a former Glacier High QB. All right. First off, number one, what stood out to me, looking through the stats, looking through the headlines, those kind of things. The Grizzlies' depth at running back heading into next year looks like a major, major strength after what we saw during the spring game. You already have Eli Gilman, Nick Osmo's back. You have a guy like Xavier Harris. There's Isaiah Childs. There's all kinds of talent in that room already. And now they add Arizona transfer Stevie Rocker. And they had an emerging star, possibly, a guy who was playing linebacker previously, Asher Croy, but Bozeman High product. I believe he also went to Huntley Project before that. Troy made some noise during the spring game at running back, switched back to, from linebacker to running back where he was starring in high school. And Rocker's name was trending on Twitter among Grizz Nation for his play at running back. So Troy and Rocker really add some depth to that running back room that's already very deep. Uh, Croy made headlines and kind of like I said, I saw him trending on Twitter a bit for his hard running style. He was a linebacker previously, and he's a big kid for a running back. I believe he's 225 pounds. He had 11 carries for 54 yards, the Bozeman high product. So a power back who is hard to bring down could be a guy who when Nick Osmo moves on after next season could fill those shoes as a downhill runner power back gets up field one cut kind of guy get him in the open space and he's hard to tackle that's what Croy brings to the table as for rocker he rushed for two touchdowns at a game high 74 yards on 11 carries look for him to work his way into some playing time this upcoming season in the running back room that like I said already includes FCS freshman of the year last year Eli Gilman you got Nick Osmo, who is one of those guys who's moving his way up the Grizz record books he's been had a great longevity type of career Osmo should cap it off with a strong final season, you'd imagine. And Xavier Harris had an impact down the stretch in the playoffs and big moments like to use him in the passing game. And like I said, Isaiah Childs, who we have seen him make an impact at time for the Grizz. So overall, Rocker joins that group as someone probably ready to make an impact immediately. And Croy looks like he has a bright future at running back. So that really just hammered home the point to me that the Grizz running back room is absolutely loaded. They have a strong off offensive line heading into next year. So look for them early with kind of a new face going to be taking over at quarterback to really dominate teams in the running game heading into next season. All right, number two, speaking of that quarterback battle and that quarterback room, it's going to be a new face starting Clifton McDowell left, you know, got to, got to fill the shoe, big shoes to fill. He was a heck of a player in his one year for the Grizz, helped lead them to that FCS title game. Who takes that job? Number two, and things that stood out to me, this guy has a chance to fight for that job, and that is Helena product. Caden Hewitt, he made noise at QB during the spring game, highlighted by a, a big-time connection with Aaron Fonts on a 41-yard strike down the field. Hewitt is a redshirt sophomore, and prior to his time with the Grizz, he was a three-time All-State selection at Helena High and considered the top player in the state coming out of high school. I believe he was a three-star recruit, had some interest from some FBS schools. So it's a legit QB prospect. Hewitt is 6'4", 215, that prototype build of a pocket passer. He does have some athleticism, ability to get out of the pocket a bit. The Chris starting QB job is wide open heading into next season after Clifton McDowell's departure. So I wouldn't rule out Hewitt as a real candidate to land that starting job. But prior to the spring game, I was kind of leaning towards Kiali Ayat, Fresno State transfer, Logan Fife. Those look like the guys probably gunning for the starting job. Boise State transfer, Sam Bidlack. They're all going to be fighting for that job. But now you could really add Hewitt's name to that list as a Montana product. 6'4", 215. You can't teach size. He has that prototype build for a pocket passer. Big time QB. Can take hits. Can play in the cold games of Montana. You know that. He did it in high school. And that size will translate to the college level. So just a name to add to the mix where when it starts getting to August and that QB battle is really heating up in early August, late July, Hewitt is a name to remember. No doubt.
Number three on the list here, another Grizz QB with Valley Ties. Had a strong spring game, landing him. Like I said, number three on my things that stood out. Former Glacier High Gunslinger, Gage Slider, who was a ton of fun to cover in high school. Prolific passer in high school for Glacier. He had a solid spring game performance by completing all three of his pass attempts. He went three for three for 34 total yards passing. Highlighted by a 22-yard back shoulder touchdown pass to Drew Klump. The Grizz posted that video on their Twitter. You can go check it out on the Grizz football Twitter. Slider made a heck of a pass. One of those guys who's accurate, gets rid of the ball quick. I had a lot of fun covering him in high school. And he's somebody who is a redshirt freshman. Grizz are loaded with depth at quarterback. Right now, he's probably not competing for his starting job and playing time. But it's great to see him get those reps and somebody with a bright future when the play, the opportunity for playing time does come. So we'll definitely be keeping an eye out what Gage Slider does down the road. One of those guys who just makes great throws, a heck of a passer, no doubt about that, a natural facilitator at the quarterback position. But made the most of his reps. A really crisp touchdown pass to Drew Klump. Got to love that if you're a Glacier Wolfpack football fan or just rooting for Valley athletes at the next level. All right, number four, speaking of another area athlete had, who had a very strong spring game performance, that was Libby Product. Cy Stevenson, he racked up four tackles and 1.5 sacks on the day. Stevenson is also a redshirt freshman in the same class as Slider. He's a player who has the potential to be an impact player in the near future for the Grizz. I saw him play in high school for Libby versus Whitefish his senior year. In that game, he racked up 337 rushing yards on 18 carries at running back. One of those rare guys. He was the biggest dude on the field and the fastest dude on the field when you watched him in high school. You don't see that every day. Just a standout athlete, very physical player, and he has a great chance to make some noise at linebacker for the Grizz. As soon as, I'd say, next season, as far as special teams making an impact, starting to get some playing time. So if I had to guess, it's only a matter of time before Cy Stevenson works his way into the mix at linebacker for the Grizz on Saturdays. And like I said, I wouldn't be surprised to see him very soon making an impact, at least on special teams, but a very strong spring day capped off by 1.5 sacks. Gotta love that. All right, that'll do it for our spring game talk. You know, a little throw a little asterisk on there. You know, you got to take everything with a grain of salt this time of year. It's spring football. A lot of it's just getting the reps, getting your guys on film, those kind of things, seeing what you have in certain players. So, you know, you can't look too much into it, but guys like Rocker, Hewitt, Gage Slider, Side Stevens, and all the names that we men mentioned who had strong performances, that translates down the road. Coaches don't forget about that, so it can only help their stock, and it only helps the program to just know that much more what you have in your depth, and that right now is a major strength for the Grizz at multiple positions. They are a very deep roster. All right, another piece of Grizz football news, and then we'll wrap this thing up with one more piece of college football news. But former Grizz QB who helped lead them to that FCS title game, I mentioned him earlier, Clifton McDowell announced on Twitter he's no longer transferring the temple of the FBS. Instead, he'll be making the move to McNeese State. They're an FCS school. They went 1-10 in 10 in the Southland Conference last year. The Cowboys did not have the strongest season, but a guy like McDowell should provide a major spark to their football program. And, you know, it would have been great to see him come back and the Grizz have that continuity at quarterback, a returning star who you know can get it done in big moments. That being said, it is what it is. That's the nature of college football today. I'll definitely be rooting for McDowell to finish up his college career on a high note with McNeese State. Sometimes it's all about fit, opportunity, whatever it may be. He saw a fit there and, hey, hopefully he goes and does great there and gets the opportunity to start and continues a good college career because, you know, McDowell had a lot of success. He was a lot of fun to cover. Don't win the championship, but he definitely helped get you there. So I'm going to be rooting for him moving forward. But he will be with the McNeese State Cowboys next season. Last up, some exciting FCS football news. This relates to the Grizz. This relates to the Cats, the Big Sky as a whole. But the FCS, the NCAA, ESPN, all the people making the decisions, they decided that they're going to move the FCS championship game to Monday night after the game was played on Sunday the last few years, which led to a lot a lot of criticism from college football fans and FCS football fans alike, because including myself, because first, you never associate college football with Sundays. That's the NFL's day. And secondly, speaking of the NFL, the FCS championship game the last few years has was forced to go up against NFL Sunday, and it was the final NFL Sunday of the season, the day the Grizz had the opportunity to play in the championship game. Felt like the game never really got the exposure and recognition it deserved with the national audience. It's the Division I championship football game. Deserves a lot of hype. And having that Monday night slot, there's no NFL that night. They pushed back the FBS playoffs because of the expansion and all that. So there won't be a game Monday night. It'll be a standalone event. 
the FCS football game, or football championship Monday night. It'll have their own time slot. There won't be any other football to compete with. And that time of year, football fans are very hungry to watch a sport. So I think it's great for the FCS and potentially the Grizz or the Cats if either of them makes the title game. It's just that much more exposure for your program. And overall, the opportunity for these athletes to compete in front of a national audience at, with the stakes the highest in the championship game. So I got to love that move. I think most college football fans would agree. Not that you associate Monday with college football, but you definitely don't think of Sunday in January college football. You think of the NFL season wrapping up, getting ready for NFL playoffs. So separating that is going to be great for the FCS subdivision in the long run. Hopefully they continue that moving forward. All right, that's going to do it. For this week's Interlake Sports Now, thank you as always for taking the time to check out the show. Thank you as always to our friends at Nomad GCS for the support. Shout out Hagadome Media Group Montana. On that note, I'm Josh Dugan, and I'm out.